Good morning, Grace Bible Church, or good afternoon, depending on what time you're watching this. Uh, it's the Grace Shepherd's Memo, episode nine, and I am Pastor Darren. Glad to be have you join me in my home again this morning at my kitchen table. Uh, I just want to thank you, first of all, for I got a couple people who sent me some emails with prayer requests on them. Know that I am praying for you and, and a couple texts as well. And I, I appreciate you guys sharing those with me and share those also with our member care team so that we can all be in this together. Uh, it's a wonderful opportunity we have to, in our time uh, of, of trial and separation, that we can still be united before the throne of grace together. What I wanted to talk a little bit about today is just our ability to to sing through suffering and the value. And you might be going, oh, great, here he goes again. This is Pastor Darren's like soapbox. And yes, it is my soapbox, but I also believe it's a scriptural mandate. And, and I believe this is something for every believer to, to hold on to. Um, if it was good enough for our Savior, Jesus Christ, to sing through his suffering, then I think it's good enough for you too. And if, if you think you're not a musician, I don't care. I really don't. Um, this is for everyone. Uh, you're not required to be a professional musician. I know Keith Getty has said, we're not required to be professionals, but we are all confessional singers. And, and so we, we need to sing. Uh, I think one of the greatest examples we have is Jesus Christ himself, <clears throat> who when he was facing his, his crucifixion. Uh, what did he do? We, we remember the story of the Last Supper so well. And Jesus is gathered with his disciples. What is the last thing he did when he was with his disciples before they went off to the Garden of Gethsemane? The last act that Jesus did with his disciples, it says in Matthew 26, and when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Think of that. The last thing Jesus wanted to do with his disciples before they would betray him, before they would fall asleep on him, before they would all scatter, and before his own uh, crucifixion and, and false trial and, and everything. What did he want to do? He sang a hymn with them. Why? Because singing somehow takes what we know and it moves it from head knowledge to heart knowledge. It, it makes that connection. That's why we sing so often. That's why it, it expresses part of us that, that mere words cannot. And so sing, we, we sing through our suffering. And uh, just, I want to focus a little bit on, not focus a little bit. I actually want to focus my time on Psalm 57 this morning. Psalm 57 is written by David. What's happening in David's life at this time is he's being pursued by Saul. He's in a cave and he's fearful for his life because um, Saul is after him and, and Saul's got his army. Saul is the king. Saul is going to take him out, even though David is the rightful king. And Saul knows that. So if he can eliminate the threat, that's what he's going to try and do. But this is what David writes in Psalm 57. Be gracious to me, O God, be gracious to me, for my soul takes refuge in you. And in the shadow of your wings, I will take refuge until destruction passes by. I will cry to God most high, to God who accomplishes all things for me. He will send from heaven and save me. He reproaches him who tramples upon me. God will send forth his loving kindness and his truth. Refuge in God does not mean it's an escape from suffering. David understood that, but he knew where to find refuge, even though he knew his suffering would not end. And suffering can often awaken us to, to praise God as we ought. And I hope that in this time that you've been in, in, in the stay-at-home orders, that you're learning to praise God through all of this. And you're learning to trust him more. Now, David's being pursued by Saul, and so he, he writes this, and sometimes it might feel like this. My soul is among lions. 
I must lie among those who breathe forth fire, even the sons of men whose teeth are spears and arrows and their tongue a sharp sword. Well, you might not be being pursued to death. You are, we are walking through the valley of the shadow of death. But listen to how David responds. Be exalted above the heavens, O God. Let your glory be above all the earth. They have prepared a net for my steps. My soul is bowed down. They dug a pit before me. They themselves have fallen into the midst of it. David is looking to his God, his Savior, and he's he's not even saying anything about rescue me or anything. It's be exalted, God. Let your glory be known in all the earth. Take care of it. Your name is too great for you. I know I can trust you. You're not going to let your name be put to shame. So let it be known throughout the earth. And then David has these incredible, incredible words. This is his response to suffering. My heart is steadfast, O God. My heart is steadfast. I will sing. Yes, I will sing praises. Awake, my glory. Awake, harp and lyre. I will awaken the dawn. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, among the peoples. I will sing praises to you among the nations, for your loving kindness is great to the heavens and your truth to the clouds. Be exalted above the heavens, O God. Let your glory be above all the earth. Isn't that encouraging to know that David in his suffering even went to praise God? Um, We must glorify God above all else. Instead of sit in the fear and anxiety that we might have for whatever circumstances you're going through. Not everybody is suffering because of the coronavirus. There is other suffering going on as well, and that I recognize. But I'm reminded of those words in the hymn, The Solid Rock, when darkness seems to hide his face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. So I just want to give some super practical advice if this hasn't been practical already. I think it's super practical. Um, Play good Christian music in your home. We've got a, a church Spotify playlist that we've put together for this. It's over 10 hours of music. Um, if you go to, uh, if you go on, on Spotify and you just search for our account, GBCOB, you should be able to find it. It's called Family Worship. Um, and, and it's, yeah, 10 hours of music that, that we've curated. Sounds like a museum. We've curated a library of songs for you. Um, Listen, fill your home. I tell anyone I counsel who's going through depression, who's going through anxiety, who's going through through whatever, whatever you need counseling for, fill your home with songs, good Christian music. It will comfort your soul. I was told that in seminary by professors of mine and pastors of mine when I was going through some difficult things. They said, just fill your home with songs in the background even. Film with songs of praise. Sing with your family as well. Um, My neighbors were just telling me, and some of you know who my neighbors are, and they've been going through Steve Green's Hide Them In Your Heart songs with their kids. And we were just outside on the lawn uh, about an hour earlier, and they were singing to me that, when I am afraid, I will trust in you. Two and three-year-old can learn to trust God when they're afraid because they're singing these songs and it puts them into their heart and into their mind. And then finally, I'm really excited about this. At seven o'clock tonight, join me for an online hymn sing. I'm gonna be going to to another home and I'm gonna join with another family and we're just gonna sit around the piano and we're gonna sing some some hymns to, to reassure our hearts of the goodness of God. So we'll be on Facebook Live, we'll be on YouTube Live, and hopefully you can join us for that. And uh, it'll also be available afterwards. But join us, and we're going to try and do this every week, I think, uh, on Wednesday nights. And But join some of the other online hymn sings. I know Keith and Kristen Getty do one as well on Tuesdays, and I know many of you have been blessed by that as well. So thank you for joining me. Have a wonderful Wednesday. And I look forward to seeing you tonight at our, at our online hymn sing.